Good morning, folks. I hope we're awake because we've got a lot of news in science today. Earthquake watch hit thrice yesterday. You got a cosmic ray health alert through the app. We're starting at spaceweathernews.com. Finding the last 36 hours on our star have been silent since the birth of that small sunspot group. No solar flares as it hasn't grown at all since we spoke yesterday, and it is turning towards the lamp. Solar wind here. Continued calming of telemetry has continued the low KP output. We are riding below the maximum zero-day alert for cosmic rays, but not by much. That alert remains moderate. Meanwhile, the solar wind will intensify this weekend due to this coronal hole. While we wait for it, the outlook you heard yesterday was for seismic alert. Three six-pointers struck yesterday, Solomon Islands and then down near the southern faults in both the Atlantic and Pacific. This was a considerable pressure release, but the alert must remain in effect today. Also had volcanic activity increasing in the Philippines, luckily just small eruptive events thus far. Let's use a gorgeous tarred fireball seen in the central states overnight to kick off terrestrial meteorology. We began in Peru where a landslide came like a slow-moving disaster. Even with time to evacuate and avoid major loss of life, there was just no way to stop the inundation from covering dozens of homes. A cold wave up next, not over in the U.S. just yet, and while we begin to warm back up in the new valley of the sun, we see the effects of the winter storm marching eastward. Pennsylvania snow records are no joke. Let's go to the cosmos. Streaming filaments of interacting clusters paint a picture of a tremendous dance in deep space. Image returns coming top left here, and they say that surrounding the most luminous galaxy known are three companions that work together to create that interaction. Interesting piece on a Type 1c supernova and remaining star left in its wake. They say in these blasts, the light element layers are lost before the total explosion. Interesting there. Going to gamma rays, the highest energy photons, researchers have discovered a stellar close approach in space that was expected to produce excess gamma signatures, just not 10x the gamma signatures. They say this is as rare an event as discovering Halley's Comet. Let's go back to another interaction of clusters. This time we're getting multi-wavelength views of Abel 1033. Optical, then X-ray emission seen by Chandra, and then radio wave returns as well, combining to make an incredible scene that tells a story of the past interactions. A story that optical light cannot tell our eyes looking today. Folks, a tremendously interesting article hit plus one yesterday, strongly ties the South Atlantic anomaly and Earth's magnetic field to climate variability, sea level, and more. The top science story today is only that for this community, electric theory enthusiasts, etc. An excellent review of solar wind charge exchange sets the state of the field and it's not pretty. The emission is wrecking our views of deep space and especially our attempts to understand the diffuse interstellar medium, which we believe will be plasma and dusty plasma hidden by the X-ray emission of the charge exchange close to home. Basically, we're looking through complex and varying layers to try to see the heavens. Folks, we greatly appreciate your support. Just two more days to register for OTF 2019 if you want a chance to win all four nights at the venue hotel free. We've got a slight change to the ending wind maps and shots of our star to close. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 4.20 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.